Tech Talk Revolution. Going through a lot of financial data, understanding what is relevant or not, I think those kind of mundane activities, we can transfer it to machines and which makes our life much more easier. Hi, I'm Johnny Kaplan and you're listening to Tech Talk Revolution. Our world is changing faster than we know it, and the future is already here via hot new entrepreneurial startups from all over the globe. Their innovative thinking, technical wizardry are bringing us incredibly new technologies designed to make the world a better, safer, cleaner, and more exciting place. Artificial intelligence is all around us. Our smartphones, our Alexas, our fridges, and our laptops. And our next guest has an amazing solution using artificial intelligence to trade in the financial markets. Let's meet CEO of Equibot, Chida Katua. I'm here with Chida Katua. He's the founder and CEO of Equibot, a very intelligent AI, artificial intelligence solution for the finance sector and for other sectors. He's going to tell us a lot about that. So hi, Chida. How are you doing today? Very nice. Thank you, Johnny. I appreciate the opportunity. No problem at all. It's lovely to meet you, and I'm very interested to hear more about some of these solutions. So tell me a little bit, firstly, about yourself and, and, and your background. Yeah, actually, my background is technology. I, I worked on uh, I worked on technology for a while. I was working for uh, Intel for almost uh, two decades. Before uh, starting this uh, company, my focus was on machine learning, data analysis, and also I also worked on designing uh, semiconductor too. While doing my MBA at uh, UC Berkeley at Haas School of Business, I, I got to meet with some of the amazing people and, and professors, and that is where the idea of using the machine learning and finance kind of started and uh, we build this company Qbot. So, I mean, obviously you've been working for companies in, you know, you, you said Intel, which is obviously one of the biggest technology uh, innovators on, on the planet. So you've really had the, the basis uh, of understanding from large organizations really where they're heading um, with technology. So did you find that that really helped you to bring you to the solution that you're at today? Yes, actually the, the, the best solutions are found when you merge different disciplines, different ideas together. And uh, we were solving some of the problems using technology and uh, like uh, on different classes of problems. And uh, when so this, this kind of started like sitting in a classroom of a uh, Haas business school, looking at like professor inviting some of those industry experts and their ideas, how they go about finding solutions for the financials, financial market. Then we say, okay, hey, how is it possible? Is it possible really to combine different learning from different experts and bring it together? And my background in machine learning and see that, okay, yeah, it is possible to analyze a huge amount of data and transfer learning across multiple disciplines and we can find solutions and that can be useful for average individuals like us, like who don't have enough time to go through and have understanding of the critical financial intermissions, understanding how the whole investment process works. Uh, so uh, so that, that is how, like, if when you, when you bring together different, like the capability of technology and the real problems, you, you find a very productive way of using it and then everybody benefit out of it. So. Look, you know, it's something I'm very passionate about. I myself believe that the machines, the technology is there to assist us. That's why we designed it. And we need to work and interact with it in a harmonious way to accelerate and to evolve at a faster rate. And I think there's a lot of fear out there, right? Will AI, will robots take over our jobs? Will it, will it stop us having income? Will it, you know, make an autonomous world where there's no emotion and no compassion uh, and no personal interaction? And I think, you know, there's, there's people like yourself and, and, and me who, who are sort of heading with a much fonder interest in technology where we're really using it to help us and accelerate to the human benefit. Absolutely. There is a, a idea of dystopian world out there but if you see in human history, like we have used technology to our own benefit, right? There is a lot of things that we do are mundane that can be and that can be transferred to a computer resource, like instead of us spending time on it. So for example, like we, we are right now getting the autonomous driving, which is which can be a mundane task in a sense, or going through a huge amount of medical record to understand okay, what, what happened in the past. 
similarly, uh, going through a lot of financial data, understanding what is, uh, what is relevant or not, I think those kind of mundane activities, we can transfer it to machines and which makes our life much more easier. So then it actually comes down to uh, how we are using it. We are relying on a lot of decision making to our machines uh, as we go along. And the, does it change our life cycle? Like not life, life cycle really, but does it change our uh, the end goal? Like uh, is, are, are we bettering ourselves? I think we are. We are, uh, we are using those decision making capability to help enrich our life, uh, to get time to do something more, right? So I think in that sense, I, I, I see a very, like using technology in a very opportunistic way for like helping all of us. Uh, and that's what we are doing right now. And, uh, and I think about it, right? It is touching many lives now. Like we uh, previously, uh, most of those complex financial decisions are left to the Wall Street experts. Uh, we, uh, many of us are, don't have the capability to go and understand the financial information, understand about how the decisions making are done. And now the machines giving this capability to individual users, like people who do not have enough financial background can use, may use this kind of capability to make those better decisions. So that way it is helping all of us. It is including more people around. Uh, and in a sense, our, our society will be better. Absolutely. So now you've bridged me to my next point. So tell us a little bit about Equibot and what the solution is and, and you know, give us that elevator pitch so, so the audience can understand what you've developed. Oh, absolutely. So Equibot is a financial fintech company using machine learning. We process a huge amount of data. If you think about uh, in, in terms of the amount of data, the financial industry has the highest amount of data going back to several even centuries. We combine financial data coming from like structured, we say structured financial data. That means the data comes from the market or, uh, or that the data that is published in the S&P, Bloomberg. And we combine the news and information data, like every social media post, every news articles, every television interviews. We combine the financial data and the events, and also we look at the market and combine things together to create market insight. So those insights can be used to make decisions. So we are in the process of creating the insights about the financial information and also how to make better decisions. And using those technology, we have we are the first one in the industry to launch the first artificial intelligence powered exchange traded fund. The, if you think about like S and P five hundred is a, is actually used as an exchange traded fund in the uh, in New York Stock Exchange. So uh, we are the first one also to launch the first AI based exchange traded fund in New York Stock Exchange. Now we have two ETFs trading in New York Stock Exchange. We have several indices, and also there are financial asset manager company, our customers. And eventually, uh, we, we want to make sure that everybody, or either they are financially savvy or not, they can use our platform to build better financial products or better financial decisions to their advantage. So if, I, if I'm, that sounds amazing. So if I'm right in, in, in saying you've developed a, a platform that effectively takes the greatest minds of stockbroking and uh, stock trading, it then combines it with all of that data that you've got across the internet that's, you know, you're mining through it on a daily basis, right? There are trends that are soaring in data and you're, you're going through all of that data and then you're combining it with this stock brain, right? This stock dealing brain, which effectively doesn't exist because a human being couldn't do that on his own. And then you're computing that in, you know, I don't know what, whether it's real time or not, right? But you're computing that in a very fast time frame, and then en enabling a real stockbroker or an automated stockbroker to actually make a decision based on that to trade uh, and obviously hopefully in a, in a very successful and profitable way. Yes. How about the final trading? It, is, it happens with the humans. It, it creates that what's supposed to be traded. And, 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 and there is based on our customer use scenarios, like sometimes it is, you can track it and trade it and sometimes we publish as indices. And they can use that information to uh, create a product. He is absolutely right. So we are combining the huge amount of data coming from market and the news data. And also we are looking at each and every company uh, almost all around the world right now, looking at how they execute. So it is, it is doing that kind of rational investor decision making. So when you look at something, we, what are the things that we use those information to make the decisions, like looking at the financial data, look at the, how the management does, for for a for a for a for equity type of investments, 
and how the informations are flowing and how the how market is observing those informations and making the decisions. So we are looking at all those things together and create that insights and uh, making a better decision. Incredible. So effectively, you can look at the market, you can make a better decision, but does that in some way uh, quash out the competitive edge? Because if everybody's using your system, how does that work, right? So, so I'm sure it's a question that's been thrown at you before. How do you respond to that? There are different hypotheses about the market efficiency. Let me talk a little bit about market efficiency. So there is a, 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 there is a call something called Pharma and French model, Pharma and French uh, hypothesis, where there's a market is always efficient. That means all the information out there are already factored in, market already priced that in. So that, so that means you do not have opportunity to create any arbitrals in the market, right? So, so everything is market knows the best. But our philosophy are actually, the philosophy is market is efficient when the information is consumed. And the information doesn't get consumed the right at the right time or the right way, but it takes time to get information consumed. Once you act on information, the, the, it, it changes. So what, that is called alpha. So, so alpha is not a, is not a fixed uh, target where uh, you can say, okay, hey, I act on it and that, that is it, I got the alpha and I've taken out all the arbitrary opportunities. Every time a member participates, the alpha moves. So it is a, it's a moving target. So based on, and, and almost every investor, every consumer, they have their own idea for how I want to go and uh, use that, how I want to exercise that information to that get to the alpha. So first of all, alpha is not, even if it is a finite, it is not a static, it, it, it changes. So every time you act on it, it changes. So, uh, for, so that means that almost everybody have a way to play. It's not like I, I can... I can take out all the arbitral opportunity, and nobody else has the opportunity to play. Right. So, so there, there will be there will be more uh, AI based uh, uh, platform will be out there in future who will be also doing the similar kind of things. So it's it's like there are many money managers are also on the Wall Street. Everybody act on it, and they believe in their strategy and they try to get out. It the depends market. on the algorithms that it's built on. It depends on the brain. It depends on the way it's learned because this isn't just AI, right? It's machine learning as well. So it's not just that you program it one way and it stays like that, but it's constantly evolving over time, right? Getting smarter yes. uh, and making better decisions, which is, which is, so, so they're all kind of, it's a race, right? Everybody's competing against each other and, you know, whose brain is thinking and processing faster. And, and that is what, <laughs> that is that is definitely yeah. one aspect of it, but uh, at the same time, there are so many kind of uh, uh, investment uh, strategy hypotheses out there. Some people try to invest in environmental social concerns, so or some people invest in some, their own philosophies, right? So I think that those things create different kind of opportunity also in the market. So uh, yes, who has a higher compute does play into the picture. At the same time, everybody have their own way of approaching the market. Have you ever analyzed the crypto market? Because I suppose that's something that's really volatile at the moment, has very different parameters to uh, traditional markets. Is it something you've considered moving over there? Is it something you currently do or it's not kind of the area that you focus on? No, we are interested. It's just that we don't have a product yet right now. In future, absolutely. We did have a look at it, and right now we have so much of things in our plate. Right now, we we haven't uh, uh, gone after creating a product in crypto, but absolutely in the near future we will do that. Well, you definitely got the right customer base, right? Because you're talking <laughs> to ma massive brokerage firms. You know, they have the funds. They want to advance their profits. They're looking at ingenious ways to to advance with technology in the markets. So you're definitely in the right space. And I can't imagine that, you know, you said you're very busy already. So I can Im only imagine that, you know, automated AI brains that give you more information and better information are very valuable in the marketplace. So tell us a little bit about the company. How did you set up the company? You know, who did you found it with? What kind of investment did you raise? You know, whatever you're comfortable really telling us. Oh, absolutely. Actually, this company kind of started at the classroom of UC Berkeley in the High School of Business. And me coming from a technology background, I was sitting in the uh, asset management and headspot strategy class and the professor will invite different uh, experts. So then it came to me, okay, why, why can't they share their expertise across? And, and like it kind of doing a Vulcan mind melt, right? You can, if you, that, then it'd be much more, uh, more effective. And after the class, I'll go and talk to the professor and say, okay, hey, this, is, this is what I'm uh, thinking about working on. And the professor at the house is like tremendously helpful. 
And in my classroom itself, I found my co-founder who was doing my MBA with me, uh, Artem Ardor, uh, who was working for Fidelity for a while, managing more than uh, $3 billion fund. And another my co-founder, Chris Natividad, who was also uh, came from the financial industry. Even though I was coming from technology, but they came from finance industry. So we had a very good complementary skills. We went out and figuring out how to build things together. And uh, we experimented with that. Uh, using different platforms out there, like like AWS, uh, IBM. And IBM took notice of us and they put us into that uh, global entrepreneur program. And we became the first one in the industry to launch AI-powered accelerator fund using a lot of IBM Watson's capabilities. And that, that gave us enough visibility to, to get uh, more customers. We did uh, uh, fundraising. We raised almost like just a $2 million primarily for seed round. And and then the, our philosophy was that for a company to be successful, we should be able to sustain ourselves. We, can we run a f- company without even raising fund, right? We, we, we actually, we will be raising more. At the same time, our, 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 we organically grew pretty well. We have right now more than a billion dollar of asset under management. And then we are gathering, we are appealing to more customers and Eventually, we will. And our, our, our philosophy also is kind of in a, in the way a Berkeley mindset. Like we want to democratize access to everybody, and that is what we are trying to work towards, and getting to the such, such a uh, to a certain level so that everybody, anybody, doesn't not, matter if they have not financial expertise the, or not. Not just the top one percent. Yes, we we want we want it to access to everybody. Like it doesn't matter they are uh, uh, they are coming from financial manager at Wall Street or you are just like me. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't come from a financial background and I can make that kind of that good a financial decision, that good investment decision. Just to your point earlier, I would say that, you know, when you turn up with an AI brain saying, look, we can understand the markets, we can analyze it. Probably the first question you get is, OK, show us what you've done with it. Right. So so what you were saying about bootstrapping is, in a sense, you kind of need to prove that you can say what it does on the tin. Right. Otherwise, uh, it's very hard to convince anybody else. And you've obviously done that now with, you know, over a billion dollars in assets. And, you know, wish you wish you very much luck in, in, in continuing with that success. Uh, and just back to your point about making impacts now. It, it, just reflecting to what you did previously, you had a venture that was helping children in Africa to get more literature and books, right? So, so that was something that you were very involved in and has been an impactful part of your, your experience and your work history, right? So you spent your own time and energy and efforts to, to ensure that other people in, in you know, distress points in the world are, are getting an education and getting access to stuff. So it kind of makes sense what you're talking now about how even though you've moved into the financial sector, you still maintain with you that, that, that sense of impact and it's it's very good to see. Absolutely. I think uh, having that perspective really helps. We, we get biased by so many things like getting biased by, by, by looking at uh, all the things that is happening around the world. I think your, your company having a vision that aligns with a, a, a greater objective, it keeps you motivated. And that's what you are trying to achieve. But that's really the point of this show is, is really to provide a platform in the same way, in an equitable way to people around the world. So it really doesn't matter what background you come from, but if you've shown initiative and you've got out there and you've made some substantial uh, headway with your business, you're really changing uh, things up in the marketplace. You've been innovative and you know, you've know you got to a, to a substantial stage. And that doesn't mean that you had to have raised $50 million, right? You could have bootstrapped it. And I think that's really what you guys have proven with this system, that really with your own investment of time and money and hard work with really a, a very small investment, $2 million to, to build an engine that manages a billion dollars is a relatively small amount, right? So you've been very, very effective in that. And that's really what we're doing here. We, we, you know, we're providing the opportunity for you to tell your story and to hear about it so that we can inspire others and motivate others and, and allow others to interact with you and with others in the marketplace to, to really change their destiny in the same way. Absolutely. Now, now, now thank you again for the opportunity here. Every, every entrepreneur has this kind of goal, like how to build things better, bigger, faster. And also it has a purpose, right? You start with what you're familiar with, what you're comfortable with and, and build it. So really my last question to you is what's the, you know, I see where you've got to, I, we have an understanding of your past and where you're at, 
what, what, what does the future hold? And, you know, not, I'm not talking about the next year or two, because I think we anticipate to grow further. But where are you seeing yourselves in the future? What position, what impact in the marketplace? Yes. Uh, so the financial market is, is definitely needs a uh, lot of technology infusion and disruptions. Uh, so right now, if you think about, we are using, first of all, our uh, machine learning to look at the data, make the life of like the asset managers more productive. There are, if you already know that AI is, is evolving. We are, we are at the very uh, beginning phase, I can say, that where the, where the AI can be. And our, our systems, are, our algorithms are getting more smarter and we are also, we should be able to, uh, able to do more compute in future. With that, right now, not only we, are, we can able to make decisions on uh, what kind of investment, but also how to bring productivity into the, in the, into the market. Like how do you make those companies better? Right? Even those data we are, uh, we are generating and we can, we can also cater to those kind of, those kind of product or like the other company needs. Like we can provide them, okay, hey, if you structure your information this way, this will be much more beneficial to you. And also there are the breeds of different kind of discipline, like uh, looking at how the customers, how the financial service um, uh, sector can service the customers, like how to better understand their consumers to make it better. Uh, so, there are, so there are so many other areas that we can grow into not only just serving to the, for the investment need, but understanding what customer want. And uh, before even the customer want, we can we predict, okay, this is the right way we can go about it. And uh, bringing those productivity also not to the consumer, but also the different asset classes, like how they can be much more, more, more effective. So, so all those opportunities are out there for us. Our database is growing, and at the same time, our compute capability is also growing. So both of them together, we can do that kind of amazing things in the future. Absolutely. It certainly sounds like a bright future and a very exciting one. And I love the way that you talk about it because it's a passion that I share and really a, a goal and an aim and a direction that I share for technology and the evolution of AI and, and machine learning. We're definitely going to keep watching you and, and following your progress to see how you change it up. And as you said, spread the wealth to, to really to, to the masses. It is a wonderful solution. Thank you so much for talking with us today, Cheetah. And we look forward to catching with you up in the future and hearing your progress. Thank you, Johnny. And thanks again for the opportunity. My pleasure. Thanks so much for coming with us today. Wow, wasn't that absolutely fascinating? AI is certainly going to change our future and it's happening so quickly. Kudos to Cheetah for such an amazing solution that's going to revolutionize the financial markets. In our next episode of Tech Talk Revolution, we meet with a startup veteran who enables other entrepreneurs to succeed. Founders Space CEO, Steve Hoffman. As always, I'm Johnny Kaplan, and Tech Talk Revolution is a co-production of Tech Talk Media and Electrocast Media. Executive producers are myself, Johnny Kaplan, Ronald Hans, Mark Netter, and Peter Rafelson. Our producer is Rianne Faye Seninning, and our editor is Carl McCarthy. Stay tuned to Tech Talk Revolution for our next episode, where we continue our journey meeting leaders of the world's most amazing startups, bringing you more incredible new technology from across the world. If you'd like to learn more about the startups we visited, please check out our show notes for additional information. For more info on the Tech Talk Media company, please visit our website at techtalkmedia.tv. You can subscribe to Tech Talk Revolution wherever you listen to podcasts and wherever you can catch up on some of the amazing guests in our previous episodes as well. We greatly appreciate if you leave a wonderful rating or review, and please do share this podcast with your friends to let them know about Tech Talk Revolution. Electric acid.